Welcome back to the Natural Balance of Care Corner. Last week we started evaluating the lameness issues this six-year-old mare has been dealing with for over a year. We've mapped out the front foot and we'll now get going on the hoof preparation. First thing we're going to do is the thing we do with every foot. We, we exfoliate the foot finding the, trying to find the, the waxy surface. Now this mare hasn't been shod for a couple of months. There's some extra growth here that's, that's exfoliating. There's a chalky layer right there. Getting down through that. And I want to be very specific to not miss that waxy surface. And it's very important, especially with a horse like this one that has a leg that's not particularly straight in line as to what we think is straight. Quite often, as, we're, as farriers are taught, to view this foot by looking, finding the balance by looking down the foot like this and make the heels 90 degrees to the cannon bone. On a, on a normal foot, that probably works very well. Unfortunately, with a foot that is not in line with what we normally call straight, this foot can get twisted, distorted, one heel can become higher and give you the view that it's, that it's in correct alignment by looking at it from this perspective. The latest and most recent information about medial lateral balance tells us that the sole is exactly the same thickness underneath the bone on each side of the foot. So we've chosen to use that as our guide. We've yet to fail in getting horses to a higher level of soundness by using those guidelines. It's very simple, it's easy, and it's, uh, it's what the horse's foot uh, is actually telling us. We don't have to look at that and speculate on it. So with that, from what I see right now, I see that this wall is just ever so slightly higher than this one right here. I also see that this heel is more curved as well. And one of the things that we have uh, realized by using the sole as a guide is that it's very easy to see one heel that's higher than the other simply because one, the, the one that curls the most is always the tallest. So with that, we're going to continue to exfoliate this foot and find the waxy surface and not go any farther into that sole once we've achieved that. Same is true on this side. And I'm just going to just search out the sole over the front part of the foot. And I'm going to, again, just go through that chalky layer. All right, this being a smaller foot, I'm going to mark the apex of the frog. Come back here. It's a place where the bars tend to terminate into these grooves alongside of the frog. I'm going to make a couple of marks there. Draw a line around the area that I've exfoliated on both sides. And it becomes much clearer now to see where the actual widest part of that foot is. And it always lines up very close to an inch back from the apex of the frog on a medium sized foot. Now you can see again this distance right here, how short it is in comparison to this length out in front. Okay, I'm going to trim that foot to ensure that I don't get trimmed too close to that sole, which happens frequently. I'm going to mark all the way around here, start my trim here are, we have very specialized um, instruction material that will show you how to go through this uh, if you want to pick it up off of our website or we have videotapes and such as that to, to refer to as well. So to be more specific you can you get that information. What are, my objective is is to trim the height of this wall equally to the exfoliated live sole here. Now I'm going to trim this portion so that I've left that line over the front portion of the foot. Just getting the foot trimmed has helped it a lot, but still 
there's a huge difference distance forward of that. I'm going to trim this foot till I just eliminate that line there. And I just eliminate the line here on this side and that's all the farther I'm going to go down. Take this toe portion and I'll just make that flat all the way through there. I haven't over trimmed this very conservative over the front part of that foot which oftentimes is the cause for this foot to become distorted. We have realized that trimming the foot too close at the toe in order to stand them up or to align the pastern actually creates the very problem that we're trying to overcome. Simply thinning that sole down, getting it too close to the tip of the bone seems to disconnect the wall and allows it to migrate forward, which gives us an unclear picture of the relationship of the pastern alignment against the dorsal hoof wall. I'm going to eliminate the distortion as much of it as I can anyway. I'm going to pick out this ring that's most prominent about halfway down the foot and I'm going to work at that until I start to see the white portion with the inner hoof wall come through on the lower end. This is going to help me get this foot back into shape and help to avoid the ongoing distortion. Again, the thing that creates these problems most of the time is just thinning this sole too much allows that wall to disconnect and start to bend way up in the upper part of the foot. I want you to notice this very specifically. She's standing primarily on this foot now. She's accepting that simply by the way she's responding. You know, so she's licking her lips. She's actually looking around to this side. She's actually leaning to this side. Those are all real subtle things, but they're very important. It's just kind of telling us that we're sort of on the right track. Okay, now that I've got the outer wall groomed, when I come back here, I want to see that this wall is uniform all the way around. If it's a quarter of an inch here, I want it a quarter here and all the way around. You can see that the lamina is somewhat stretched, meaning that this foot is still distorted forward, but this is all we're going to take care of at the moment. We are going to, because this distance is is uh, approximately three quarters of an inch from there to there. We're going to go just inside of an inch there. That's going to tell us that our coffin bone is right there. We're going to place our break over just a quarter of an inch ahead of that. And if we're, if we get that done, now you see these proportions are equal. That's all the time we have for this week. Please join us next week as we continue working on the lameness issues of this mare.